When it comes to Chinese math history, probably the most significant surviving work is the nine chapters on the mathematical art. It contains the solutions to many problems, and although its authors and date of writing are unknown, scholars have used the units present in some of the problems to date its creation to around 200 BC. However, history is complicated. This was a beloved and standard Chinese math text, so it's certainly possible the units were updated in revisions of the text over time. There may be older versions which have been lost which used older units. But something we know for sure is that one of China's great mathematicians, Liu Hu, Liu Hu, Liu Hu, Liu Hu, Toy boat, toy boat. Liu, Liu Hui published a commentary on the nine chapters in the year 263 of the Common Era. Liu, Liu Hui was a descendant of Marquess of Zixiang and lived in Xiaowei. And in the preface of his commentary on the nine chapters, Liu Hui describes the inadequacy of the ninth chapter and its treatment of right triangle problems. So, as part of his commentary on the work, he wrote an extension of chapter 9, or an appendix, which just reminds me how glad I am to not be learning English as a second language. Appendix. An appendix refers to a small worm-like pouch attached to the large intestine or supplementary material added to a book or document. <laughs> Bro, imagine needing a worm-like pouch attached to your large intestine to live. Couldn't be me. Thankfully, humans don't need the appendix to live, but history certainly needed Liu Hui's appendix to chapter 9. Before the Tang Dynasty began in 618, an appendectomy was performed, and Hui's extension of chapter 9 took on a new life as a standalone work, titled Haidao Xing, or Sea Island Mathematical Manual. The name coming from its first problem, which concerned measurements of an island. The problems in the Sea Island Mathematical Manual are stated in practical surveying terms, but one of the problems, when when put into modern geometric language asks, what is the side length of a square inscribed in the corner of a right-angled triangle to touch the hypotenuse? Here's the relevant diagram to clarify the problem statement. The idea in this problem is that we have a right-angled triangle and we know the lengths of its legs. Let's say the length of one of the legs is A and the length of the other leg is B inscribed in the corner of the right triangle so as to just touch the hypotenuse is a square. The problem then asks us to determine the side length of this inscribed square. Now if you'd like, you can pause the video and try to solve this nearly 1800 year old Chinese math puzzle for yourself. But if you're ready, I'm going to go ahead and show you how Liu Hui solved it in his wonderfully written appendix. It's a very beautiful and stunningly simple argument that just involves a little bit of copying and pasting and rotating and translating of the involved geometric figures. The first step in the solution is going to be to duplicate this figure and rotate it 180 degrees so as to create this rectangle. This duplicated and rotated a triangle would also have a duplicated and rotated inscribed square. I've printed out a more well done version that I did in software. So now by duplicating the original figure we have a complete A by B rectangle. I brightened the colors on the duplicate figures so you can see this light blue square that's a duplicate of the original dark blue square, the light gray triangle is a duplicate of the black triangle, and so on. Now let me tell you how the rest of Liu Hui's art argument is going to proceed in case you want to try to pause and finish it out yourself. We're going to continue to use shapes present in this figure in order to construct another figure whose area equals the area of this rectangle, but whose area formula, if we were trying to calculate it, 
will involve the unknown side length of the square, which we might as well go ahead and label as S. We'll thus have an equation, A times B, the area of this rectangle, is equal to the area of that other figure, which will involve S, and then we'll be able to solve for S in terms of the known quantities A and B, the leg lengths of the given right triangle. All right, for this argument to work, we are going to focus on a couple smaller components present in this diagram. We're going to use this tiny triangle here, which has a duplicate right here in the other big triangle. And we're also going to utilize this bigger piece of the right triangle. Of course, a smaller pink triangle has a copy here, but also another congruent copy over here. And if we were to ignore this pink part, then the green piece has a congruent sort of copy over here. Then with just a little bit more copying and moving things around, we arrive at this figure. Notice that this dark green triangle piece has a leg length congruent with the side length of the square. The side length of the square, of course, is also seen here. So we know it will work out perfectly to take one of these triangle pieces, copy it and rotate it and put it right here. We can then take that piece, copy it, flip it, and get another green rectangle here. Then of course, again, the leg of that green triangle piece is congruent to the side length of the square, so we can attach the square once again over here at the end. Now our focus should be on this long rectangle whose height is the side length of the square which we seek. Remember, we know A and B, that's all we know. So we would like the area of this long rectangle to only involve A, B, and S, and we want it to equal A times B, the area of this original rectangle. That way we can create an equation and solve it. And that's why this rectangle has been constructed in this way. This piece of it at the start has a length of A, since that's the base length of the original given right triangle. And hopefully you can see that the amount we have extended its length with these extra pieces is in fact B, because it's the height of of this green triangle plus a side length of the square, which of course is B. Hence, it's certainly the case that the area of this long rectangle is height times base, so S times A plus B. And what is this long rectangle made up of? Well, it's made up of two blue squares, two of the little purple triangles, and two of the bigger green triangles. That is in fact exactly what this A by B rectangle is made up of. The A by B rectangle is made up of two blue squares, two of the purpley pink triangles, one here and one over here, and two of the bigger green triangles, one here and one here. Because this long long rectangle with an area of S times A plus B is made up of the same exact components that this rectangle with an area of A times B is, we know those areas are equal. S times A plus B equals A times B. And hence, the solution to this problem from the Haidao Suan Jing is that the side length of the square inscribed in the right triangle is in fact A times B divided by A plus B. It is really quite an elegant solution. If a square is inscribed in a right triangle in this way, then its side length will have to be the product of the right triangle's legs divided by the sum of the right triangle's legs. That's really cool. Well, I hope you and your worm-like pouch enjoyed this fun little math puzzle. Let me know in the comments if you had any other configuration of shapes to solve this problem or another method entirely. And be sure to subscribe for more of the swankiest math videos on the internet. I'm unstable, I'm feeling hard to keep a cable cut and unsort the table If Texas Instruments don't reply, I think this time it might be fatal I Wish to sell my own fake, cause I'm jaded Hate the odds that I calculated Press and pull the brain, push it all the way through the whole blue planet, faded